Let's say that one day your friend came to you and told you he needs you to lend him some money. You asked him how much he needs, he tells you, he needs a hundred dollars. You of course accepted to give him the money. But when you opened your wallet to send him some Ethereum, you found out that the network is congested and you will need to pay $57 as a transaction fee to send your friend the $100. Now, you have three options. Pay the very high fee and give your friend the money, or you can give him the money in cash, or you can wait for a while and send the money when the fees are low. But what if you want to avoid this situation in the future? Well, that is where crypto bridges come in. Welcome to Cryptobi, where we explain cryptocurrencies and DeFi topics in the most simple and beginner-friendly way. In this video, you will know exactly what is a crypto bridge and why would you need to use one, how a crypto bridge actually works, and finally, we will talk about some of the issues with using crypto bridges. So, let's get started. To be able to understand crypto bridges, you first need to know the difference between a coin and a token. A coin is a cryptocurrency that has its own blockchain, like Bitcoin, Ethereum, Solana, Cardano, and Dogecoin. A token on the other hand is a cryptocurrency that uses another coin's blockchain to run, like the Shiba Inu token, which runs on the Ethereum blockchain. Some tokens are available on multiple blockchains, like Tether for example. Tether is called a stablecoin. But, technically, it is a token that is available on multiple blockchains, like the Ethereum blockchain, the Avalanche blockchain, the Algorand blockchain, and the Solana blockchain. You should also know that you can have a token that represents another coin. For example, you can have a token that represents Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. This type of tokens is called wrapped tokens. This wrapped Bitcoin has the same price of Bitcoin, but it runs on the Ethereum blockchain and can be used in a lot of decentralized applications. Now that was a pretty long intro, but it is important that you know the difference between a coin and a token. Let's now get to crypto bridges. A crypto bridge simply is an application that allows you to transfer tokens from one blockchain to another blockchain. For example, you can transfer your Tether tokens from the Ethereum blockchain to the Avalanche blockchain, or you can convert your Ethereum coins on the Ethereum network to wrapped Ethereum on the Polygon network, or you can get tokens that represent Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. But the question here is, why would you even want to move your coins? Well, there are many reasons. First, the much faster transactions and very cheap transaction fees you can get on another networks. Remember the situation we talked about earlier. If you had your Ethereum on the Polygon network, the transaction fee to send your friend the money could have been as low as one cent. And the transaction will be processed much faster than the Ethereum network. This is one of the reasons many people use bridges to move their Ethereum to other networks. Another reason to use bridges is to get wrapped tokens that represent Bitcoin or Dogecoin on another networks. For example, you may have 0.5 Bitcoin, but you can't use them right now on decentralized exchanges like Uniswap to buy link tokens for example. Also, you can't use them on decentralized applications like Balancer or Curve to earn interest. This is because the Bitcoin and the Dogecoin blockchains do not support smart contracts, so many people go to a bridge like the Ren Bridge lock their Bitcoin or Dogecoin and get new tokens that represent the Bitcoin or Dogecoin. But on other blockchains, like Ethereum or the Binance Smart Chain, so you lock in your 0.5 Bitcoin and get in return 0.5 REN Bitcoin on the Ethereum blockchain. The REN Bitcoin token has the same value as the native Bitcoin, but it can be used on a lot of decentralized applications like any Ethereum token. Let's now get to how these bridges actually work. There are two types of bridges. The first type is bridges that work using smart contracts and the second type is bridges that work using liquidity pools. We know that these words may be confusing, but we will explain them very simply. Let's begin with bridges that rely on smart contracts and let's say you want to get your Ethereum on the Polygon network, so you use the Polygon bridge. This type of bridges has two smart contracts, one on each blockchain. So, here we have one smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain and another one on the Polygon blockchain. So after you click transfer, your Ethereum coins will be locked in the smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. 
After the validators verify that the coins are locked successfully, they send a message to the other smart contract on the Polygon network confirming the lock of the coins on the Ethereum network. So the other smart contract automatically mints new wrapped Ether tokens for you on the Polygon network and sends them to your wallet. Examples of these bridges are the Polygon Bridge, Avalanche Bridge, REN Protocol, and the Harmony One Bridge. All these bridges mint wrapped tokens when you lock your coins on the main blockchain. So, what if you want to reverse the process and get back your native Ethereum coins on the Ethereum network? Well, it is pretty simple, when you use the bridge again, the wrapped Ether tokens you had will be burned. Burning tokens means destroying them by sending them to an unusable wallet address. After the tokens are burnt, the proof of the burn transaction will be sent by the validators to the smart contract on the Ethereum blockchain. When this happens, the smart contract unlocks your Ethereum coins and sends them back to your wallet. So, what about getting some REN Bitcoins? The Bitcoin blockchain doesn't support smart contracts. How will the bridge work? Well, the validators on the REN protocol create a wallet address like a vault on the Bitcoin network. When you use the bridge, your Bitcoin will be locked into this address. And the validators are always monitoring this address. When any coins arrive, they send a message to the other smart contract to mint the wrapped tokens. You may be thinking, what prevents these validators from giving the other smart contract wrong information? Like they can say, for example, that the coins were burned or locked. While in reality they weren't, to give themselves free wrapped tokens. Well, before being accepted to be a validator on the network, they lock a large amount of tokens into the network, and when a validator transfers wrong information, other validators will notice, and the fraudulent validator will lose some or all of his locked tokens, and if these validators are doing their job correctly, they make money from the bridge transaction fees. There are some bridges that work with smart contracts but don't need external validators, like the Near Rainbow Bridge. But this type of bridges is much harder to develop and pretty complicated, but we will cover them in a separate video. Also, tell us in the comments below which bridge you want us to make a detailed video about next, and if you are enjoying this video, give it a like, it helps us tremendously and pushes the video for more people to see. Let's now get to the second type of bridges, bridges that are based on liquidity pools. Liquidity pools are basically pools that contain a lot of tokens. Each bridge has a lot of pools, for example, a bridge may have a pool for Tether on the Ethereum network, and a pool for Tether on the Polygon network, and a pool for Tether on the Phantom network. All these tokens come from investors, who want to earn money on their tokens, when they are used in the bridge, these investors are called liquidity providers. So, let's say for example, that you have Tether on the Ethereum network, and want Tether on the Polygon network. So the bridge takes your Tether tokens and deposits them in the Tether on Ethereum pool and then gets some tokens from the Polygon pool, and sends them to your wallet. Sometimes the tokens in a specific pool run out, and you can't complete the transaction until a liquidity provider comes and deposits some tokens into this pool. So you need to have a look at liquidity available in pools before making the transaction. Most bridges allow you to see this in their analytics page. Examples of these bridges are AnySwap, now called Multichain, C-Bridge, and the X-Pollinate Bridge. Let's now talk about the risks of using crypto bridges, the most obvious risk here is the bugs or vulnerabilities in the smart contracts controlling the bridge. Hackers can then exploit these vulnerabilities to mint wrapped tokens for free, but how can this affect you while using the bridge? Well, this will affect you only if you have wrapped tokens like wrapped ether for example. If a lot of wrapped Ether tokens were minted for free, without native Ether coins to back them, the wrapped Ether tokens will lose their peg to native Ether, and the price will crash. So, for example, if one wrapped Ether was equal one native Ether before the hack, when the price crashes, one wrapped Ether will be worth 0.5 native Ether, for example, and you lose half your money. A well known hack that happened recently was the Wormhole Bridge hack where the hacker minted 120,000 wrapped Ether tokens worth approximately $321 million. However, the bridge was able to restore the supply through a crypto investment company, which deposited the 120,000 Ether coins. Other problems you may face while using a bridge are long waiting times and high fees, sometimes the transfer of your tokens may take 10 hours or a full day to complete on some bridges. Also, the fees you pay to transfer tokens are very high, sometimes reaching $100 or 
But still, if after the transfer you will pay very low fees on the Polygon network for example, then it may be worth it to pay the gas fee and transfer your tokens. At the end of this video, we hope you learned what you need to know about crypto bridges and how they work. And if you liked our video and want to reward our hard work, give it a thumbs up, comment if you have any questions and subscribe to our channel and turn on the notifications so you don't miss our new videos, we promise they will be very simple and very easy. Thanks for watching.